Okay, it's running. There. Yeah, All right. Got it. All right. So let's get right into it. Okay, so first of all, we're going to be talking about uh, HTML5 Notepad, which is a little sort of demo app that I created to learn about local storage and offline. Then we're going to tackle local storage first because it's easier. Offline second because it's a pain and it requires a lot more explanation. Uh, yes, disclaimer. I'm here to learn just as much as you are. Uh, I don't claim to be like a super HTML, HTML5 expert. So yeah, if you want to jump in at any stage, if you see something up there that's like totally terrible and you want to offer advice, feel free. But yeah, just let's learn and uh, figure stuff out together. So HTML5 is a HTML5 notepad is a learning tool. Um, just for fun, I threw it up at the Chrome Web Store. I have about 600 users so far. Um, it hasn't been a whole lot of feedback, so either it works really well or it doesn't work and they're just not telling me. Uh, it's open source, so if you want to get the source code, just go to GitHub, Jason Hanley, Note 5. Um, yeah, if you want to get that and follow along on your laptop, yeah, feel free. This is what it looks like. <clears throat> it's pretty simple. It's kind of just based on the whole uh, iPad notes thing. So I just wanted a very simple note-taking app. I figured that was basically the, the most simple application I could design that used these technologies. Um, and then there's just like a list of the notes that you have. So again, not rocket science at all. So why do you want local storage? Well, you need to store user-specific information for applications. Uh, the only way to do that before local storage was cookies. And as we all know, cookies kind of suck for a lot of reasons. They're small, you're, you're limited to a certain number, and they're very efficient because they keep getting retransmitted on every request. So is local storage ready? Well, this is one of those success stories. Local storage is actually in really good shape. You can use it on just about any modern browser or device. So yes. Um, However, in terms of the legacy support, in terms of things that don't support it, well, what I did in HTML5 Notepad was I used a script to emulate it with cookies, which may or may not work, and I pretty much ignored it because I had the luxury of saying, you know what, I don't really care about legacy devices. Uh, what you probably should do is actually detect using a little script called Modernizer and branch your code based on that. That's sort of the right way to do it. So let's get right into it. Saving a note. Not difficult. Um, I call json.stringify, which turns um, a JavaScript object into a string. And then I just call window.localstorage.setItem. So you can see the code here. Um, and this is actually the newer code that's on the development branch. It's not the live code. Um, I'm actually saving each document separately now just as an optimization. Uh, the one that's live right now saves everything in one big thing and it's not the same. When you want to load a note, all you gotta do is window local storage get item, and then of course I use the json.parse to uh, turn it back into an object. Again, easy, very easy. You can do it right now. Um, if you do run into trouble, it's very easy to debug. Uh, in Chrome, anyways, you can list, refresh, edit, delete um, all of your local storage values. Um, I think that Firefox through Firebug has a similar thing, but I don't know, I haven't used Firefox yet. I really couldn't tell you for sure. But Chrome is great for debugging this with this interface here. Yeah, so that's local storage. I want to keep it short and sweet. Uh, any quick questions or comments on that before I go to offline? There you go. See? Simple. Offline is not as simple. Uh, so why do you want offline? You might be on a plane, a subway, or yeah, I can resist being shot at <laughs> So is it ready? Well, most major browsers have support for it and support pretty well. The only major exception Internet Explorer. Even the latest version, apparently, and I was shocked when I found this. I only found this out when I was when I was 
research in this presentation, to be honest. Yeah, even, even version 9 doesn't support it. So, uh, I don't care too much about an Internet Explorer, especially for this project, so, but you should at least be aware that offline will not work in IE. So how to do it? It's easy. Just create a cache manifest file, add your files. Okay, actually, it's not that easy. So let's get into what you actually have to do. So this is an example of a cache manifest file. Um, starts with cache manifest. Uh, you don't have to have a version, but you'll see why that's important later. Uh, then, of course, all your files. And then there's this fallback section and network section. And I'll explain those two in a bit. So the first is gotcha. Caching the cache. So you want to make sure that your cache.manifest file is not cached via HTTP. So hopefully at least like two or three of you know what that means. If you don't, use html5boilerplate.com. Basically that, that gives you an awesome start that includes all the files to just make it work. But this is essentially the code that you need to have uh, to make sure that your manifest file is not cached via HTTP. And that's important because if your manifest file is not reloaded, then none of the files in that manifest file are reloaded either. So for instance, if you had like a CSS file or a JavaScript file that you changed and then uploaded, it would actually never give you that new file unless you got a new version of the manifest file, which is very counterintuitive. It seems like a bug, but that's actually how it's designed. Uh, the second gotcha, the fallback. Okay, this, this is really complicated. Basically, the fallback defines what to use if you, get a, if you get a resource that is not cached or couldn't be cached for whatever reason. Because sometimes the browser just randomly doesn't cache it. Yeah, I know. Uh, anyways, it at least gives it something. And it'll show you this offline.html. The network section defines which files are always to be gotten from the network. Now, start means all. And you're like, hey, well, isn't that going to defeat all the caching? No. I'm not going to get into the details of why, but basically, this is what you want for that section. If you're more interested in why, you can read like pages and pages about it, but if you follow that, you should be OK. I spent hours and hours trying to get these sections right to actually make something work on an iPad offline. This is it. Uh, OK, so this is the version that I talked about before. So again, even if, you're, even if you make sure that your cache manifest file is not cached, problem number two is that if that cache manifest file doesn't change, so even if it reloads and gets a new version, but if it looks at it and says, oh hey, this is actually the same, it won't reload any of the files that are listed in the cache manifest file. Again, very problematic if you update a JavaScript or CSS file. And you can just you can rip your hair out, like trying to figure out why it's not reloading. So you actually have to make some kind of change in the cache manifest file. So what I've done is I've just created a version via a PHP file that, that builds my manifest file for me um, that just update, updates it with a timestamp. So it'll always be different each time. Um, your caching. Okay, this isn't strictly related to offline, but again, when you when you end up, if you do all those previous steps and then you do a refresh and you still don't get your new file, which it'll happen to you, believe me, it's often because you, it's still HTTP caching. So this is kind of a clever little way to get around the HTTP caching is that each time you release a new version of your app, you change the file name to slightly. And again, I have a little script to add a timestamp to the file to the file name each time to ensure that the new one is always loaded. Not only that, the new one is loaded, but then it's cached. So it's not the same as saying never cache that file. It's saying cache it until I actually change it. 
and then cache the new one. So again, that's just kind of a, a nice little way of making it just work. Debugging a lot more. Yeah, I have this little statement from the uh, great dot into HTML5.org site, which I'd encourage all of you to check out. It's, it's a very well written. Um, yeah, this can make debugging offline web applications even more frustrating than usual. I can definitely say that's the truth, especially if you want to try and get it working on an iPad, for instance. So, in Chrome, though, you do actually have a little bit of help. Um, if you go to the application cache, cache section, it will give you um, some debugging messages. It'll show you all things that are cached, size, you know, why the cache, that kind of thing. That, that at least helps a little bit. Um, unfortunately, though, on a lot of other devices, you don't have that luxury. And you just kind of have to keep trying and trying until you get it right. But if you follow all the steps in this presentation, odds are it'll probably work. So yeah, if you want more information, uh, you can just go to html5notepad.com. There's links to the source, uh, from web store, everything there. Um, yeah, if you have a look at the develop branch, I'm just starting to do some online synchronization stuff. So basically taking the offline app and making it so that it synchronizes so that you can have it on multiple devices. And they all kind of automatically synchronize. A lot harder than you might think. Or exactly as hard as you might think. So yeah, that's pretty much it.